Hey everyone. So it's been a while since I've posted one of these practice questions. So um, my uh, class is about to move on to equilibrium and the price mechanism. So I wanted to put this one together uh, so I can show them and also for the others out there who are learning about the price mechanism. So the question that I have is a paper one part A practice question. This question is worth 10 marks. Um, and you should write an essay similar to this within 30 minutes. So this is the question that I came up with. Explain two functions of the price mechanism in achieving a new market equilibrium after an increase in supply. So you've been given a specific change in the market, which is an increase in supply, and you're supposed to explain how the price mechanism achieves a new equilibrium and explain the two functions of the price mechanism. So let's get started and see how to construct an essay in response to that question. So for those of you who've been paying attention in this series, I always start with an introduction and definitions paragraph. And it's not just me. All econ teachers always advise you. You always start by introducing and defining the key terms. So I wrote something like, in order to address the demands of this question, a few key terms need to be defined. Supply is defined as the quantity of a good or service that producers are both willing and able to produce and sell at a specific set of prices over a certain period of time. And the price mechanism is defined as the system System by which the forces of demand and supply determine the prices of products. I only defined these two. Please don't feel the need to define every single key term you're going to use in your essay because it's a waste of time. You don't actually get marks for um, your definitions. You get marks or you get assessed on how well you use these key, ter key terms in the essay. Step two is to draw and label the diagram fully. Now, some teachers advise students to explain the theory first, then draw the diagram and explain the diagram. But I prefer to put the diagram right after the definitions so that you can weave your explanation of the theory and your explanation of the diagram together. And I'll show you how I do this. So obviously label the diagram. I labeled it figure one. This makes it easier to refer back to it. And I have um, S1 and S, um, S, sorry, S and S1. And that's because the question does mention that there has been an increase in supply. Um, I've also labeled different points like point A, point B, and point C, as well as P1 and P, um, Q1, Q, and QS. All of these labels will help me explain the diagram in the next part of the essay. All right, so this next part of the essay is really the meat. It's the main course if this is to be a fancy dinner. This is step three. Okay, this is where you explain the economic theory while making sure that you fully explain your diagram using the same labels, shifts, and arrows that you have drawn while also making sure that you link back to the question. This is really the meat of the essay. And this is where I wrote something like, the price mechanism has two main functions, a resource allocation function and a rationing function. These two functions will be explained using the diagram drawn in figure one. As shown in the diagram, the supply curve has shifted to the right from S to S1. You'll see I'm using the same labels that I have drawn in the diagram. Okay, that's why we label the diagram so it makes it easier to explain it and refer back to it. And then between parentheses, I said possibly due to the granting of a subsidy or a fall in the cost of production. This is just to give some context to the increase in supply, to give some context to why supply may have increased. This creates a temporary disequilibrium in the market. The difference between point A on the diagram there's point A, that's the initial equilibrium, and point B, a situation of disequilibrium where there is an excess supply or a surplus of QS minus Q. The difference between QS and Q is our surplus. This surplus will exert a downward pressure on the price of the product in question. As the price of the product gradually falls, this signals, so I'm explaining the first function of the price mechanism, this signals to producers that there's a surplus and gives producers an incentive to produce less. The fall in price also gives consumers an incentive to consume more until a new equilibrium point is reached, which is point C in my diagram. This signaling and incentivizing as a result of changes in prices is the resource allocation function of the price mechanism. Through changing prices in responses to surpluses or shortages in the market, consumers and producers receive signals and incentive to adjust incentives to adjust their consumption and production until this surpl these surpluses or shortages are cleared. In this process of adjusting consumption and production levels, resources are reallocated in the market. 
So I've explained the resource allocation function. The end result of this process is that the equilibrium price eventually falls from P to P1, and the equilibrium quantity eventually increases from Q to Q1, as shown in figure 1. The price mechanism also has a second function, rationing. When prices change, consumers' willingness and ability to buy the product also changes. As prices rise, some consumers will be less willing and possibly less able to buy the product. And the opposite happens when prices fall. This is how the price mechanism rations or distributes output. Those who are willing and able to buy the product will be the ones who will eventually consume it. In the case illustrated in figure 1, the price of the product will fall from P to P1 due to an increase in supply, and this will increase consumers' willingness and ability to buy the product, and so will lead to an increase in quantity demanded from Q to Q1. Okay, so after I've drawn the diagram, I've basically answered the question um, and addressed the demands of the question, explained the theory while also referring back to the diagram. And that's why I like to draw the diagram early on in the essay, right after my introductions and definitions paragraph. No essay, no essay is complete without um, a simple conclusion paragraph. And this is step four, is to write a short and simple conclusion paragraph that wraps up your essay while restating or linking back to the question. This is where you have to make sure you have understood and addressed the specific demands of the question. So what conclusion did I write? To conclude, after an increase in supply and through its resource allocation function, the price mechanism through the drop in price signals and incentivizes consumers and producers to adjust their consumption and production levels until the resulting surplus is cleared. Also, through its rationing function, the price mechanism ensures that output is distributed among those who are willing and able to buy it. This process continues until, until a new equilibrium is reached, which is point C in figure one. And there is my conclusion paragraph. Now, I include this in every video, but again, it's a good reference. Once again, this is a paper one part A, and these are the different mark bands. And I'm assuming everybody's aiming for the highest mark band, the highest level, which is, um, level five, a nine or a 10 out of 10. And to achieve this, you have to show that the specific demands of the question are understood and addressed. Relevant theory is fully explained. Relevant economic terms are used appropriately throughout the response. And where appropriate, relevant diagrams are included and fully explained. And I believe the essay I have structured in this video matches or, or fits those mark bands. Uh, one last thing, um, I always mention this at the end of my vi videos, especially more recently. So creating videos for this channel takes time and energy. If you want to show your support, please buy me a coffee and there's the link. The link will be found below the video in the video description. You can also become a member of this channel. There are exclusive members only perks like review notes and all of this and videos for members only. The link again can be found below the video. If you're looking for online tutoring or if you're a teacher that's new to IB economics, you're looking for online coaching, uh, you can fill out a contact form. The link is again in the description. Please like, share or comment or subscribe. All of these things are also helpful ways for you to engage with my content even without supporting it um, in those ways I've listed. So all the links once again are listed below in the video description. Uh, it's been a pleasure sharing uh, my questions and my sample responses with you and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Have a good one. Bye.